Hi, everybody. This is Steve Maggi from SMA Law Firm. Welcome to Building the Bridge. I'm here with Charlotte Nutoff, the Strategic Export Advisor, working with European companies looking to launch U.S. operations. Thanks for joining us, Charlotte. You're most welcome, Steve. It's been a pleasure. So you work a lot with sales, exports, uh, companies that are exporting, but also it all has to do with sales in the end. Doing business means exactly. selling. Tell us about establishing a solid sales channel in the U.S. How does that work? The um, what what companies from Europe need to understand when they go to United States market is there is no such thing as as this one one size fits everyone on the U.S. market. Um, I have if I just had a dollar for every time somebody asked me, can you just find me one meaning like one? distributor for the US market, uh, because that's the easiest for us. We would like to just uh, sell X works from Europe and then have somebody take care of our business in the United States. And, and I, I hate to, to disappoint people, but that, that's, that's not, it's not an option. That, such a thing does not exist. Um, and, and the people that usually are asking these questions are also really not uh, prepared to actually understand the, the customers and how, what are driving the market for their products. So, um, and, and looking back, we have always been, been um, um, used to having this distributor. We were producing stuff and then we were selling through a distributor channel that was actually the ones that were in contact with, with our customers. Um, but these, these channels are, are you know, um, these years, these channels are uh, under, under, uh, undergoing a, a big change. And the reason being that we, as uh, the companies that are manufacturing products, uh, the, the companies that are owning the brands, they can be in contact with their customers directly. That was not an option just a few years ago, but but right now we can actually be in contact with our customers. So the so the 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 the, the role of a a partner, a distributor, an agent is entirely different. Um, compared to, to 10 or 15 years ago, where you needed to have a partner to even get your products uh, out to the, to the consumers on the US market. Um, so, so right now you actually need to understand how, or you need to make a decision for yourself and your business. What type of information would you actually be willing to give up control of mm. in the dialogue with, your, with, the, with the market? Um, because some, uh, you, for your business, you might uh, actually only need somebody to bring the products last mile to the customer, or you may only need somebody to actually install the equipment and service uh, the equipment and, and take care of, uh, of the, the returns and the warranty and so on and so forth. Whereas you would like to have the dialogue yourself with your, with your customers. So, so the, whole, the whole art of selling through other people is undergoing a tremendous change these years. Yeah, I think people underestimate how complicated this all is. The, the issue of sales tax, state by state, the issue mm -hmm. of liability. If you're, something happens with your products that you're selling, uh, if there's you know, some sort of defect or something, you can't pass the buck to someone else because you don't have your own US company set up. So setting up a US company is uh, oftentimes very important in terms of limiting your liability but also gaining a, con a, a more a, a increasing control over the process, the sales channel, the final, the final destination, and the final product, and also building that those relationships directly with the clients, right? Exactly, and I think the the relationship building is is um, is crucial, and that is what what um, few uh, or few Danish and and European companies actually underestimate is the is the importance of actually building these types of relationships because sometimes when you are or most often uh, times uh, European uh, products may be, you can say, superior to, um, to American products, or maybe um, you can say two or three generations advanced compared to, uh, to um, competing technologies on the US market. And you need to, a part of the selling process is also educating the market of different ways of doing things. Right. And that takes, uh, that, that takes quite some, that takes quite some effort. But the challenge is um, 
giving the authority to somebody else besides your own team to actually educate the market and get the feedback from the customers and get the feedback from stakeholders and industry associations and, and lawmakers and, and whatnot to actually see how your product fits the market. Uh, nobody does that better yet. You should be in control of that process. And that is such a crucial process when Europeans need to sell their products um, successfully on the US market. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that there's a misnomer that because <clears throat> technology has advanced so much and so much so much is done virtually, that it is possible just to get a, that magical distributorship relationship happening and then do everything via remote control and you can be back in Copenhagen or some other place in Europe and be successful in other markets. But in, in reality, if you don't have boots on the ground and you're not giving a face to the name, you're not able to explain these things in the language that you've created based on your software or your products, you can only go so far, right? Exactly. And I also think in, a number of companies make the mistake of... of um of actually not really making the contract with a partner in the United States. Um, all, the, all the steps that it requires from the, from the exporter in Europe to the, to the user in the United States, the sales, the business, de the business development, uh, first of all, and then the sales and the marketing and the, and the public affairs and, and pushing the, the um, the agenda on, on by lawmakers and the distribution and the last mile delivery and the service and the warranty and all these tiny steps that might actually be different different um, different people that need to to actually play their part um, in that whole value chain. If you are selling, for instance, a a, um, a high-priced consumer goods, uh, your best um, partner, so to speak, may be a, um, um, somebody on social media that can actually push your product um, through influencer marketing out to the consumer. And you only need a third-party logistics firm to bring the product the last mile to the, to the, to the consumer. And the entire engagement, you, you are in control of yourself with, with the consumer. Um, it, it might also be the case that you have a, a, um, a B2B product and your best partner, so to speak, is, is somebody who is actually um, talking to industry associations and, and helping help the, um, the, the regulations actually be, be, be changed so the, the, um, they actually will fit uh, your way of solving whatever problem with wastewater or, or or, or things of that nature. So, so really, I think the, it's not yeah. one size fits all then. It's like not, I no, said, there are certain misnomers, but I also make assumptions when I ask these questions that there are better ways. Like you mentioned, the, the one, the company working with an influencer, that's something that didn't exist five years ago. So oh. you really need to work with someone who will create a solution and a strategy for you that's case by case, that's specific to that circumstance, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, so that is a, uh, um, that you really need to understand and you need to, there's a saying that if you're selling through a, a, some sort of a, a dealership, some sort of a distributor, you may have won the sales, but you have lost the opportunity to create a relation with mm -hmm. the customer. And I think that it, that should be sort of the guiding staff for every every company that, that wants to go to the United States, because it's really, really important that you understand every time you ask somebody else to do something on your behalf, you're giving up the opportunity to actually engage with the with the consumer, uh, the professional consumer B2B or the um, private consumer uh, B2C. So, um, so that's that is that's, uh, that's a great observation, because I, I have seen in my 20 years doing this, a lot of people think. I will introduce the product through a distributor. We'll reach a certain threshold where we're, we're, we're really putting up very little risk. We'll reach a certain mm -hmm. threshold where we can just then step in, take over the distributor, and then we just keep all the profits for ourselves. But they haven't actually built the relationships with those end users or end clients. Yeah. And also a number of European companies are, are somehow surprised when they actually find out that the distributors they have engaged with were actually not really um, hired to do the business development, 
um, they 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 assume from coming from Europe that if you are making an, an, an engagement with a, um, a distributor that he or she would actually do the business development and find your ideal customers and that's that's oftentimes not the case unless you really have have stipulated that in your contract most time the distributors are basically taking orders from product that are known and introduced by other ways of marketing and and and, and pr to the to the um, to the customers well that's um, why they're called distributors and not partners so exactly yeah so but, but um, besides that a lot of people actually or a lot of companies do really believe that the the partner and distributor is, is doing the business development right so, so yeah. European companies that are interested in developing a sales channel in the United States, how do they get in touch with you to talk about this? They can get in touch with me either by connecting on LinkedIn or by sending me an email at the Charlotte at exportacrosspond.com. Great. Thank you for your knowledge and for your time today, Charlotte. You're most welcome, Steve. Thank you. Thank you.